Welcome to the third and possibly last in our three-part section on hyperkeys. I'm just going to jump into the next part to talk about, and that is number conversion. Now, in this document we're looking at for an example, we can see that the writer, well, first let me fix this, it's supposed to be its. So, if you remember from our last video or the one prior, then we're just going to use our um, tilde slash apostrophe button key up in the corner to insert that. Now, I'm sorry, moving on, we see a string of numbers that have not converted correctly. The question prior had asked, what is your telephone, sir? And a telephone number. So what we can do here is definitely before we even want to rewrite this. When it comes to numbers, as I said, um, Infobar is always going to give you some really great options. It's assuming it could either be a huge uh, number, a huge currency number, or just plain. I'm going to show you the two ways that we could convert this correctly to be in the format of a number, a phone number, I should say. What I would first do is press 3 to make my selection from the info bar. But I'm not done yet. I'm going to go back by toggling over with my J to the beginning of that number. And then here, we can see that choice 4 brings up the correct format for a phone number. Wonderful. I'm going to toggle back with Z to revert everything back. And let's try a different way to do it. Where did, I, where did I go? There it is. Okay. Sorry. Now we're down at the bottom. Z's a funny button. Okay. I'm at the beginning of the string of numbers again. Now looking over to the info bar, this time let's look down at option 5. I'll expand this so we can see what it says. It says convert numbers. Okay. Now convert numbers or number conversion with this little picture or control shift 3, it will bring up this option. I'm just pressing 5 to bring this up. Look at this. A number conversion window. In fact, I'll bring it above so it doesn't overlap with my little video of my hands. And we can see that the input is showing what we currently have in our transcript with the current output depending on what is selected. As I said, this is just a simple quantity. Or money. Maybe an ordinal. <laughs> Seven million the. Roman numerals. Wait, is it going to do Roman? Maybe it's just too big. I don't know what generic does. Oh, here's some cool formats. Phone number. A social security number. A zip code, I suppose a very long zip code, and even, let's see, time? Well, it's too long to make time or date correctly, but just to show you everything that um, that can be. So when we are in here, you can either, again, I guess at this point you would have to manually maneuver with your mouse to make a selection, but also, if you remember from one of my earlier videos about how whenever there is a line, or a, uh, a character with a line beneath it, underlined, that means that you can then hit the corresponding key on your keyboard to make that selection. For example, I'll press P, it jumps up to phone number. S gets me to social security number. Well, I want P for phone number in this case, so I'll press that, enter, and it's made that conversion for me. Let's see another example. And is your social security number 4382650010, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Again, we have two ways to go about this. In this case, I feel a little bit more acquainted with the uh, number conversion. So I'm going to press 4 from my list of options on the info bar, bring it up again, press S for social security number, move my pinky over to press enter, and I selected OK. Wow, that saved me a lot of time. So that's everything regarding number conversion. Hopefully, uh, I think it will really help out when you are on the fly and doing uh, real time. Well, I guess if you're doing real time, you'd have to be good enough to actually get it, but assuming that can't happen, you can go back during editing and make these really quick selections. Moving on, I'm going to jump on down to a certain part of the, the, of the transcript where we can use an example where it would be very useful um, to learn how to use some dashes. Well, I'm going to... Oh, here's an actually one. It often happens that when people are speaking uh, during a deposition or court proceeding, they are going to interrupt themselves, false starts, uh, have a change of, of direction mid-sentence. It happens all the time, right? In this example, we have the first thing dash dash, no lying here, dash dash. Okay, well, if you are learning STEN-Ed, you would probably have learned to do, um, well, I'm not on my writer, but it would be D and then RB on one side, on the other side to make dash. This person learned that dash dash should be put in, but we don't actually want it to say dash dash. We want it to have the symbols of dash dash. And what we can do is, well, I'm just going to look at uh, option number five on my info bar is perfectly what I need. Although it didn't replace that. Let's actually see if I were to go to the beginning of these, mark mark to select it, and then replace it with dashes. 
Unfortunately not. Well, what I'm going to do is make my selection of 5 in this case, and then simply D to delete this other one that's in my way. But let's say, I'm just going to delete, delete, let's say that I didn't have time to even write dash dash. The first thing, no lying here, the court reporter, okay, so I know that there, have, there should be dashes. I don't have any um, indicator in my notes because I didn't have time to write it, but what I would do is place my cursor to the right of where I want those dashes to be. In this case, I want it to be between the word here and the. And then what I'll do is actually press the hyphen, uh, hyphen key on my keyboard. It inputs it, and if you can see a little squiggly line, yours might not appear, but that simply means that there's a lock space, and that's what you need. You would never want it to have um, dash dash appearing at the, at the beginning of a new line because it has to be connected to the previous. It kind of looks like a mistake and it's hard to read. But if you do see a squiggly line, that's why. So it's all safe. So I guess anywhere, if I want to see the court reporter, maybe some funny pause, hyphen will input dashes everywhere you go. Now let's say that you, I'm just going to jump up a little for example, let's say that you want the, the end of the paragraph to end with double dashes. Then what you would do is anywhere inside of the paragraph that you want to end with double dashes, don't press the hyphen key, but right next to it, press the equal sign. Let's see what happens. There you go. Cursor jumped down to the end of that paragraph and added a lock space and double dash. And maybe one way you can remember to press the equal sign, yeah, the equal sign key, is because, well, equal has, it's made of two lines, just like two dashes. Plus, the equal sign is a little bit, you know, thicker. It's doubled up compared to a hyphen key, so it's maybe more powerful to finish off a paragraph. At least that's what I tell myself to remember. One more way to use uh, the, the double dashes is in the instance of when, <laughs> let's say someone's speaking, the questioning attorney says, sitting to your right, well, let me just fix that up, needs us to talk, I understand, ma'am. Well, he's probably trying to say one at a time. Well, option four to replace this word, and I don't need that A, so I'm going to delete it with D. Now we have a nice clean part needs us to talk, I understand ma'am, one at, oh I see, actually, you know what the issue was is we should have reversed it. How do we reverse it? Put my cursor on the first of the words I want to swap, or reverse, shift R. Well, good thing we have that Z key at times, so even I make mistakes and you can go back and, and fix it to what it was really supposed to be. But anyway, this is an instance where someone has butt in. So we're going to learn how to conveniently place dashes at the end of the prior paragraph and at the at the new paragraph where the person you know is continuing his or her statement and yeah I could go up here and then press my equal sign and go down at the beginning of this one and press that but there's actually just a one key move in order to do this you have to place your key at the beginning of the paragraph where the speaker picks up again and then check this out shift B that will put in the two dashes because you can remember the shift B or capital B as because someone has butted in, that starts with a B, right? This is a pretty, pretty useful when you are doing, especially, um, you, well, I guess if you are doing real time and you're really good at, you know, uh, having some syntax to input a, a budding statement, then that's really great. But people are always talking over each other a lot. If you're looking over a transcript, this is going to come up quite a few times, I'm sure. Let's just practice that again. Uh, let's find something clean. Uh, let's just say, is that all right with you? Another thing. I don't know. Let's just imagine he's trying to say, is that all right with you? Sure. Another thing, you know, for whatever instance, quiz, what do we do? We are going to put our cursor at the beginning of the, the paragraph where he picks up again and shift B. And it gets rid of any punctuation that there was at the end of that previous paragraph before he, someone butt in and then picks it up again. Now, really, we have actually reached everything that I've wanted to talk about with hyperkeys for the sake of this lesson. Let's just do a little bit review. <laughs> there are a lot of things. I might just kind of tick them off. Oh, goodness. Let me refer to my notes, actually, so I make sure I don't miss anything. The first thing we covered was the power of the info bar. It never hurts to jump on over and see if the choice that you want is already listed there before you start figuring out with other hyper keys or, or new text options. We then learned how to input punctuation at any point inside of a sentence by simply pressing that punctuation key on your keyboard comma, period, question mark, exclamation point, uh, even quotes, semicolons, colons, etc. 
If you wanted to jump to the end of a paragraph and change the ending punctuation to a period, you just press P. If you wanted to jump to the end of a paragraph and input a question mark, you press Q. I'm actually going to jump around a little bit and have something related to that. Let's say you want to change the paragraph type into an answer paragraph. Then you pressed Shift P. See a little connection? You want to change the paragraph type to be a question paragraph? Shift Q. These are really closely related, which is why I want to throw them in together. There's the Z key, or the oops key. It typically brings you back one or however many steps, not too many, in order to fix a, in order to fix a mistake. We then learned that if you press M, you are marking text, which you can tell because that word becomes highlighted, like a big block of highlighted text. You can use this for a variety of purposes. If you press M and highlight just one word, and then press hyphen, you will import hyphens between each character of that word. Press M a few times, boop, 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 to highlight several words. And uh, let's say you want to press a hyphen, you'll input hyphens between those words. When you have more than one word also, one or more words marked, you could input punctuation around it, such as commas on either side of it, or even quotation marks, single or double, on others, either side of it. We learned how to use F3 to make a break right in the middle of a paragraph to create a new paragraph line, which will be a, a question form. Similarly, you can also press F4, breaks it anywhere in the middle of a paragraph, and creates a new paragraph type answer paragraph type. We learned how to use this little uh, tilde apostrophe key in the upper left hand corner to toggle through different possessive apostrophe s forms of a word. It'll input an apostrophe between the word itself and the s if it's already there, move the apostrophe to the outside of that s, or in, in instances, add, also add apostrophe s as well. Toggle once more and it disappears. Toggle it too many times, and then Eclipse will bring up another window asking you, okay, buddy, what do you want? I'm throwing everything I got at you. Let's flip over and see what else we got. We learned how to use the F T F2 button to bring up the speaker table. From here, you can make changes to the names of any of the parties present or the speakers present. We learned how to break or join paragraphs. Someone's going on a little bit too long, you want to make a nice break. Just put your cursor there where you want that break to occur, and you'll press Control P. It'll jump it down to a new paragraph, which is the same type as the one prior. Control J will join that paragraph and join it right up to the top one. We learned about capitalization. Putting your cursor at the beginning of a word and pressing A will niche cap that word. And do it again. Let's actually see. Make sure that works. Oh yes, I should make clear. When you press an A, you will niche cap that word, literally that letter that you're highlighting, and then jump to the next word. But let's combine that with an M. First you would mark that word, and then press A. And it will make the entire word all caps, toggle it again with the A, it'll make it niche capped, or then all lowercase. At the same time, when you have your cursor at the beginning of a word, press Shift A. All caps the entire word that you have your cursor on without having to highlight it. The very useful key of D for deleting a word. And then we learned a variety of ways to input double dashes. Anywhere inside of a paragraph, so long as you press the hy uh, hyphen key right up here, it will input dashes with a nice little lock space to the left of wherever your cursor is. If you want to have double dashes ending a paragraph, so as long as anywhere your cursor is anywhere inside of that paragraph, press the equal sign key and it'll add that to the end. Let's say you have a situation where someone's speaking and someone has butted in. Well, after the fact, put your cursor at the beginning of the paragraph where that person uh, begins to speak again and press Shift B because some butting in took place. Very useful. And of course, the very last one we didn't do too much of, but it is very useful, is to press N. That will exit you out of hyperkeys. You can input some new text. And what's wonderful is when you're done writing your new word in place of another one, Enter, enter, deletes that unwanted word, puts you right back into hyperkeys, and you are ready to go again. And that is everything I wanted to talk about relating to hyperkeys. There are even more functions and features of hyperkeys that we could get into, but these are really the most important. What is it? 10, 12 features? Anyway, I hope you learned a thing or two about hyperkeys and you start to incorporate it into your own editing. It will make it a breeze. 
and you won't regret it or you won't dread editing nearly as much. Thanks so much for sticking with me for these three videos.